Hey guys, welcome back. This time we're gonna start a new sculpture. We're using clay with grog and I'm putting in a slab of clay. I always like to use a platform and I'm linking two sections together. So I kind of roughen it up. I make sure I get it really wet and join it really properly so it doesn't crack. Normally that tends to crack if you don't do it properly. So I tend to use these geometric shapes to build up the bulk of the figure. If you use an armature inside, you don't have to go this way, like this clunky way, but I can kind of envision what I want already. I have the figure in mind and I just kind of want to bulk it up. People tend to do more gesturely sculptures in the beginning, but I find it that if I'm doing something without an armature inside, it's a little bit harder. So if you can, see from the sculpture i have a reclining female model with her legs up and her head is kind of sticking out of the platform a little bit so she's going to be dangling her head backwards uh, i like to rough in the the torso and the pelvis and the direction of the legs the first session i concentrate mainly on just getting a gesture the sticks these are shish kebab sticks i like to use them for these armatureless sculptures and I will put the clay around because the lower legs are going to be extending out and it tends to dry out a lot harder and of course if I did it did it without the the sticks they would just kind of droop so essentially the wooden sticks are the bones of the sculpture because the thighs are also they don't have anything they do kind of sink and droop but I tend to kind of push it forward once in a while at this point, you can see I'm just pushing the thighs upwards and I'm gonna build a little bit more towards the pelvis because I want the clay to stay up. And this is done with a few sessions because if you work a session and you let it firm up, the pose will solidify and then you can continue building with your clay. And I'm kind of trying to figure it out. Everything that I do tends to change and I'm kind of debating at this point if I should do keep the arm up or down. And ideally, you want to have the pose set in your head before you really start, but I tend to change things midway. And if you do change, make sure you change when the clay is still wet. You don't want to do it when it's already kind of hardened. Also take a measurement of your figure because sometimes uh, you might want to, you have the proportions wrong and I tend to do that as well. So at this point I decided I don't like the arm like that and the reason I didn't like the arm that way was because the arm hides too much of the stomach, the rib cage, the breast and I want to be able to see more of the chest. The way I'm going to put the arms are going to hide a little bit more but I think it's less intrusive than having the arms up. I decided to put the arms at our side on the platform and I think it's a little bit nicer in the long run and I also made a change to the legs. I had the legs close together and I do like the pose with the legs close together but I decided to do a little bit uh, different and I'm going to open up the legs just slightly. Normally this is something that you want to do right in the beginning. Try not to do this too late into your sculpture. And now because I moved the legs I need to firm up the thighs a little bit, push in the clay, make it a little bit smoother because I don't want any like air bubbles developing in there and I am going to start bulking in the rest of the sculpture I use pretty much all the same tools over and over the only downside with working with water clay is that if you use metal tools they tend to rust but adding the bulk of the muscles you can see I'm adding them very slowly I use the same tools and I prefer tools that are flat like this wooden tool because I like the sculptures to become a little geometric. I know a lot of people don't like that but I like the facets to the sculptures. You can 
see the way I'm joining the legs. I just need a rudimentary way of joining the legs. I'm not trying to create any detail at this point. Just simply connecting things together, not worrying about any detail, creating sharp edges, and figuring out the direction of way, the way the body is going is more important to me. Your sternocleidomastoid of the neck, on hers, is going to be a little bit pronounced because she's arcing her neck upwards. And I'm going to be building up upper arm. There is a little bit of a problem with the reference that I'm using, is that it, a lot of times photography tends to flatten out all the muscles. So one of the best reference websites I've seen is postspace.com but they don't have this pose so I am using female anatomy for artists that's a really good website they have more poses but and the quality is not as good as pose space for artists I'm indicating the gastrocnemius as muscle this muscle is going to be bulging more because of the way the leg is pushing down on the thigh I use multiple tools like a flat scraper and then I come in with a serrated tool because I want to blend the muscle groups together. And it helps me go into the next process if I do this because if I need to add a different, different uh, muscle I can do it much easier. Drawing in where the eye socket is going to be I like to kind of make a rudimentary skull shape before I start to add any detail. I also like to keep everything flat. This is my facet way of sculpting. If you keep geometric planes sculpted, it's usually better adding the detail afterwards instead of rounding You should also things take a measurement of your mature. head and compare it to the body. Sometimes in a pose like this, when the model is laying down, you tend to make the head smaller. So take a measurement of the head and compare it to the body. There should be seven and a half heads to a human body or if you want to make it ideal, eight heads. and there's just so much good to use very durable you can make your own if you do make them make them out of some hardwood like oak but generally these are lifetime tools I've, unfortunately I can't say the same thing for the serrated tools that I bought but if you stick to wood tools like this they just last a lifetime you know there is an issue with sculpting the foot and the lower leg because it tends to get kind of heavy and you also have to make a determination on how big you want your female feet to be. It tends to look better to have smaller feet, but you also want it to be proportional. There are different things you can do with the human body, especially the female body. There's a lot of canons of proportion if you want to make a model more attractive by increasing the length of the thighs or shorten the legs. William Bouguereau's nudes always had much longer thighs than they did the lower legs, which was very interesting. But in modern society, the lower leg is the one where people concentrate much more energy on. Try to express something with your sculptures. Don't just do a sculpture that's a typical portrait or a typical figure. You want to say something with your art. At least I tried to do that 
you know, I've gone to a lot of open drawing sessions and I have been stuck doing that same old life drawing thing over and over. So in a way, these sculptures help me kind of push myself a little bit. And hopefully, as you're watching, maybe you'll learn something or maybe you will help me by posting in the comments below or something that I have missed. I try to look for the silhouette sometimes just so I can get the exact shape of portions of the body of the rest because that is pushing everything down. You have to realize that it's pushing down so much and it came along with that more fat because of the hard surface of the With the hands, I have to kind of carve in a little bit of the gluteus because it, when I first sculpted it, I made it too wide. And when you look at the model, her hands are actually going in and holding herself up. And that's something that you only learn as you are looking at your reference for long periods. I was trying to figure out a better smoothing tool and I got this blue cloth that you can get at you know, Walmart and by diluting it with water, you can create a very finished-like texture. I also like the idea of keeping the platform rough with a different texture and having the smoothness of the body on top. And now I go back with my regular wooden tools and create a little bit more anatomy in the body. The stumps that hold the legs, I remove them at this point because now the clay is a lot more firmer. Without these stumps, the legs would just collapse. You might want to put some temporary uh, stumps in there for the firing process as well. Now I'm going to add some details to the foot and using the silicone tool, I'm just going to create some edges. I like to keep facets to a lot of the sculptures that I do because I think that looks a little bit better than just rounding off everything. And now I'm going to sculpt a little bit of the ear and indicate some of the landmarks of the neck. This is the part where some artists would probably just cover this section. You could, for example, use drapery and cover the parts that you don't want people to see but I actually like it and in a way I am a very big fan of erotic art and that's one of the reasons I do my sculptures this way. I've had several comments about how I am squandering my skills but you know I don't believe that. Everyone has their different idea of what a sculpture is so my idea could be a little bit different than most. I do like to sculpt heads quite a bit but I found that this head because of the reclining position it takes quite a bit of work because the model is reclining if this was a stand-up sculpture it would be much easier and also if it was an oil-based clay you could remove the head and just kind of stitch it back down when you are done but because this is water clay it has to remain in I do like to add more detail in the head than I do in the body and I also like to trail off the detail as it goes down. Also I change things very often. I finished the head and then I went over it because I didn't like it and I went and added a little bit more fat because she was a little bit too skeleton like. This is something you can get at a auto parts store. These are shop towels. I really like these as a tool because you can blend muscles extremely well and it gives you a texture which from a very far you're not going to see the texture but what I like about this this is the it's almost a rough sketch artists in the past used to use burlap to blend these edges together but with this shop towel it works just as good as burlap and it's actually a lot 
a lot better. And these towels go for a very long way, and they're only like $4 for a set of them. You could also order them online as shop towels. Don't get the fuzzy ones that you would clean your PC screen. Get the red ones. Well, that is pretty much the sculpture. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's taken a while to fully sculpt this. The next set of videos I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to fire it in a kiln and how to properly stain it and get a nice finished product. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.